Even when you think they've gone the wrong way, they might have gone the right way with David Russell a few years ago when he cut a corner, no one was aware you could. So, uh, yes, hopefully they'll stay in one group here. One of the features is, however, as the flag is raised, that it's a short run to the first, the Glen Farkas Cross Country Handicap Chase. Over three and three quarter miles, and away we go. Marco gives them a little bit of a start early on, but Balladon leads them towards the Banquet Hedge, which gets them underway here on the jumping. They've still got no less than 31 to take. So racing towards the second, which is a ditch and rail hedge, and at a steady pace, Balladon leads the white cap of Cantlow of the McManus Trio. Eddie Currency, who knows his way around here on the outside of Rocky Creek as they head towards this uh, second fence. Balladon will lead them over it. They all pop over. The back marker Fargo was very unconvincing towards the rear. And cause of course is who can get a fair way behind is doing so as they head towards the split fence. They can take this on either side. Eddie Currency is the only one to take it on the near side. The others all pop over the far side. But Fargo and Cause of Causes are struggling to warm up to this discipline. Now, this is the Aintree fence, and it replicates the canal turn. So you'll see them drift towards the camera, and then eventually they will cut the corner because they will be spinning left-handed pretty sharply. There's Valadon doing just that. He spies the inside apex and jumps OK. Over the second is Cantlow. There's Cause of Causes. And Fargo gave it a belt, and I don't think he's going to be going much further. He's uh, really struggled from an early stage as they now turn towards three fences in relatively quick succession. And they are all over it, Fargo included. That's the middle one of this trio before we swing right-handed towards the double bank hedge. This is a hedgelog fence. Valadon leads Cantlow with any currency in third. Ovignan with the red cap just ahead of Urchin de Gregan with Rocky Creek. Alecci and Noir comes next. They complete this trio of fences before swinging right-handed and climbing uphill and heading on then towards the next obstacle. So racing with 24 still to take and they head towards the timber rails which will be number nine. Timber rails just taken once in the race, there you can see them. And at this stage they're beginning to move out even further away from the country, still watching the uh, stragglers over it. Some of them still a long way behind, cause of course isn't Fargo as Valadon leads the turn climbed uphill and they're now in the distance from the grandstands. So Valadon leads Cantlow over that. You get a good shot of a few of the stragglers in behind. Fargo is continuing to go and of course of course has only just jumped that. The other one that's uh, struggling is the job is right. So they're now on the far side of the race course, effectively running almost the wrong way up the back straights. They're parallel to it and out in front it is Valadon who's found a nice rhythm and leads Cantlow by about six or seven lengths as they pop over that. Third place for Auvergne, back markers include the likes of Alecci Inwa in the main body of the field. Still three that are completely detached, the job is right, cause of course is a long way back. As out in front of the grey Valadon leads the seven that are effectively a part of the contest. Valadon for Jamie Barker, he's already had a really enjoyable front running ride as they now head towards the bank. And we get to three signature fences here with the bank water jump and cheese wedges, and these are the sorts of fences, Vicandina, that are unique almost as the leader stutters over that Valadon. Well, I think those, those banks are where end of Bulger's horses have a real advantage, and if you'd back Cantlow, Nina, would you be happy? Yeah, the, the two of the end of Bulger's horses are jumping very well. They seem to have an edge a little bit on a few of them. Rocky Creek, I don't think, is really handling it at all. Katie's tracking them, get nice... Uh, spin around behind them and uh, any currencies doing his thing as well. Are you surprised they're going as slow as they are? Yeah, I thought they quickened up a little bit, but I thought they were going up quite slow, yeah, early on. So these are the cheese wedges. Lone Loki is the double Gloucester as they all step over that and still continuing Fargo has just got to it, just got to the other side. Meanwhile, at the business end, Cantlow leads them on this shorter second circuit now as they head out and on towards fence number 17, the ditch and rail hedge for the second time. Cantlow on the inside of Valadon. Any currency on the outside of Aubignan with the red cap. Urgeon de Greg in, head of Rocky Creek, will take it in sixth place. Seventh for Alecci Inwar, and they continue a long way clear of the others. The other trio are continuing. Cause of Causes has got past. The job is right, and Fargo is valiantly going out on that circuit, but is completely tailed off. In fact, may just about to be pulled up. Valadon's pressing on again as they head onto the bank from the other way, crossing it from left to right on that occasion and again Cantlow took it much easier and Fargo has been pulled up before that bank for the second time. So we're now over halfway through the jumping department, Valadom out in front, uh, leading from in second place Cantlow, over now on the inside of any currency, then Urgent de Gregan with Rocky Creek and Alecci Inouar as they take that obstacle. They now swing right-handed and where they took the timber rails last time around they'll take a slightly different route 
and hence head back to home rather more quickly. So Valadon will be towards the next and stretches over in front. Valadon turning right-handed towards the 12th last. Campo in second, Ovenyao racing in third place, any currency in fourth. And this quartet have a break over their rivals, headed in fifth place by Urgent de Gregan as they continue to make the turn and now head back towards us. Valadon, it is out in front from Campo. Ovenyao didn't really get that right. Any currency took it in fourth place, and then in fifth remains Urshan de Gregon. Rocky Creek comes next to Lecce Inwa. Course of Causes is making a little bit of ground. He's 12 lengths behind the main body of the field, and completely tailed off now is the job is right. So they're now heading back down towards what is the most natural water jump on any British race course, to be honest. It's a natural brook. Pop over it. And that marks the conclusion of their second complete circuit. Cause of causes, he's not making much ground. He's still 15 lengths off the back. You may catch a glimpse of him. But it's Cantlo who leads them. And this time they'll just bypass the cheese wedges. And with 10 to jump, it is Cantlo as they pop over that. Cheese wedges just taken once in the contest. And you'll see them on the left-hand side now. And they skirt around the outer of it to head out on their final little laps. So out in front with now eight to jump. Cantlo jumps alongside the grey Valadon. Third for Ovenia, any currency being ridden along in fourth place. Still this similar gap to Urchan de Gregen, who's still just biding his time in fifth place, and he's travelling actually OK, significantly better than the next two. Alexi Inwa, Rocky Creek is uh, on the retreat as well. So now they replicate those early fences and race away from us. The split fence will be next with seven to take, and then quite a crucial one as they'll approach the entry fence for the second time. And over out in front. It is Cowan Ovignon has stumbled and unseated the rider after the fence. Didn't appear a serious blemish, but Rachel Blackmore was ejected on landing. And Cantlow is out in front. Cantlow leading from in second place. Valadom who skirts wide. The loose horse on the inside. This isn't the ideal time to have a loose horse on your inner. And fortunately, Cantlow manages to avoid him. But will he carry him wide? He's just got round. Only just. The loose horse has gone into the hedge. Hopefully he's OK. Cantlow was almost carried out there. You could see the writing on the wall. The loose horse didn't know he had to go left. And now we have four to take. So out in front it is Cantlo. Urgeon de Gregan is sidling into the race under Felix de Giles in receipt of a fair amount of weight. Then old Any Currency who's battling on. Valadom in fourth, then Rocky Creek. And now they make their way onto the old course for the two stuffed hurdles between themselves and the finish. It's Cantlo for Ender Bolger and Adrian Heskin. Urgeon de Gregan for Felix de Giles. Third place for Any Currency who's two lengths down. Then behind these Valadom and they remain clear of the others. Heading on the final turn and out in front Cantlo has a danger Urgeon de Regan has been held on to by Felix de Giles in a really pretty ride and still he doesn't want to commit as Cantlo leads him down towards the last it is Cantlo out in front Urgeon de Regan is now asked for the effort can Cantlo repel him up the hill Urgeon de Regan is now brought alongside the moment of truth for Urgeon de Regan supporters he goes past Cantlo drifts right handy when he hits the front but he's been produced perfectly by Felix de Giles and the Glen Parkers Cross Country Handicap Chase will go to France. Urgeon de Gregan pounces on Cantlo up the run-in and they're clear from any currency in third and in fourth place Valadom. Cause of Causes has got round in fifth, so's Rocky Creek and Alecci Inwa. Sat off the front quartet, the 50 to 1 winner. Urgeon de Gregan, a super ride by Felix de Giles and he had the patience to sit and sit and pounce on Cantlow up the run-in. Nina Carberry, 50-1 winner. How cool was...